Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about isosceles and equilateral triangles. And the first one we're going to talk about is isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles essentially mean that two of the sides are equal, congruent to each other, and then one of the sides is not. You, sometimes you'll see this marked by, or, or a lot of times you'll see it marked with, I call these tick marks, right? So when you see tick marks like this, what this means is this side is congruent to the other side with the matching tick, so over here. So these two sides are equal. Now the thing about isosceles triangles is that if these two are equal, then the corresponding here and here, these angles would be equal to each other as well. Now let me clarify, I'm not saying this side equals this angle, right? That's not what we're saying at all. We're saying that in an isosceles triangle, these two sides would be equal to each other. These two angles will be equal to each other, okay? Um, so sometimes all they'll give you is a tick mark. Okay, sometimes all they'll give you is this little, these little base angle congruence symbols. So these are very similar. These are like tick marks, but for angles. Okay, so when you see a matching set like that, that means these two are congruent. They are equal to each other. And if I can say these two are equal to each other, then I can do the reverse of what I just did. I can say, well, I also know that the matching sides are congruent to each other, okay? Um, so sometimes they'll show you both. They'll give you both the tick mark as well as this. Um, sometimes they will give you none of the above and they'll just tell you it's an isosceles triangle, but usually, usually they'll give you either this or this and you've just gotta understand that what assumptions you can draw from that. So let's look at some problems related to isosceles triangles. This first one says find the measure of the two base angles. So let's look at what they've given me. I've got this triangle. I see a tick mark here and here. Now they're telling me that the top angle is 36 degrees. Now that top angle Okay, it's not one of the base angles, it's the kind of oddball out, if you will. Um, that is called the vertex angle of the triangle. So just be aware, that's a good term to know. So if this is 36 and these two are congruent, then I can say that this angle is congruent to this angle. If I know the top angle is 36, I have to think back to what I know about the angles of a triangle. And I know the angles of any triangle add up to give me 180 degrees. So if I know one of the angles is 36, let me see what the difference would be. So let's do 180, 180 minus the one angle I know, 36. All right, I get 144. Now I know that 144 has to be split evenly between here and here because these two are equal. They're congruent to each other. So it has to be split right down the middle. Okay, and that means divided by two. So let's do 144 divided by two. I get 72. So that tells me that this angle is 72 degrees and this angle is 72 degrees and I can mark it on there if I want right and we know our answer is 72 degrees each and then you can always double check yourself 36 plus 72 plus 72 and you should get 180 always good to double check yourself to make sure you didn't make a careless error let's look at this one down here find the measure of all sides if the perimeter is 45 centimeters. Now, a couple things I gotta recognize about this. What does perimeter mean? Remember that perimeter, I always think of it like fencing, right? So in my backyard, if I wanted to know the perimeter of the fence, I'm adding up 
the whole length, like if my backyard was triangle shaped, right, then I would I be adding up the fence line. Okay, I'm not adding up the center. I'm not finding, I'm not multiplying to find the area. Okay, I'm just adding the outer lining. Okay, so they're telling me that the perimeter of this whole thing is 45 centimeters. All right, and they've told me this side is 2x plus 4. This side, they have not told me what it was directly, and this base is x plus 2. Now, the fact that they've given me these two little angled tick marks, right, these little angle congruency marks here, tell me that I can do this. I know that the opposing, the opposite angles will be congruent. Okay, so if this one is 2x plus 4, so is this one. Now, how can I figure out what all these add up to and what um, x really is? I have to set them all equal to the perimeter. So I know that this side, 2x plus 4, plus this side, 2x plus 4, plus this side, x plus 2, oops, Got my little plus, plus, x plus 2, gives me the perimeter total of 45. Probably the biggest student error I see there whenever we do these problems is students want to say it equals 180 because they get, they get so caught up in thinking triangles mean 180. Well, the interior angles add up to 180 not the sides. The sides could add up to almost anything, right? But the angles add up to 80. So please, please, if you were tempted to say equals 180 here, that's something you really need to be careful of, okay? It equals the perimeter. Uh, so let's do a little combining like terms. I've got 2x plus 2x plus x. So that's going to be 5x. And then I've got 4 plus 4 plus 2. So 8, 9, 10. So 5x plus 10 equals 45. I want to subtract 10 from both sides to get x alone. 45 minus 10 is going to give me 35. I need to divide out that 5 and I get x equals 35 divided by 5 is 7. Okay, now I need to be careful here because they didn't ask me what is x right? They said find the measure of all sides. So I need to be able to say what is this side? What is this side? And what is this side? And they're not seven, right? I've got to plug seven in for x. So for the first one, let's see, 2x, or sorry, it wouldn't be x. It's going to be 2 times 7 plus 4. And 2 times 7 is 14 plus 4 is going to give me 18. So that means this side is 18 and this side is 18. They are congruent to each other. Now for down here, I would just say 7 plus 2, right? And 7 plus 2 is 9. So I know this base is 9. For this one, it asks me to find all the angles. So I need to be able to say what every single one of these angles are. And they've only given me one angle. I only know that this one is 56, right? But these tick marks are going to guide me with what I need to do. So if I know, let's just start over here with this section that I do know. I'm not even going to look at this triangle yet because I don't have enough information. I don't know anything about that side yet. But I know that this corner is 56. So when I see these tick marks, I've got to think back to this, okay? That if these tick marks are congruent, then I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. So if I know the top angle, or excuse me, it's not the top, it's on the side, but that vertex angle is 56, then I need to figure out what is 180 minus 56. I get 124, which has to be split evenly between those two angles. 
Okay, so 124 divided by 2, that's going to give me 62. So that tells me that this angle is 62 degrees, and this angle is 62 degrees. Now one thing that I want to point out is that these have a double tick mark, okay? So that's different from the single tick mark. And sometimes you'll even see a triple tick mark, and it's just showing that these two that match, they're congruent. These two that match, totally separate sides, but they are also congruent to each other, okay? So just a good thing to know. All right, so if I know this is 62, I've got to recognize that this is a 180 degree line, Okay, so we got to go back to that first video when we talked about parallel um, angle relationships. Okay, that if I can do like a little rainbow here against a straight line, that whatever the angles are that make up the rainbow lead to 180 degrees. So if I know this is 62, I just want to know what is 180 minus 62? and it will tell me the other angle, 118. So I know this angle has to be 118 degrees. All right, now if I know this one's 118 and I see these tick marks, remember it's the same, it's just kind of like this one. I know that this angle is gonna be congruent to this angle. All right, so I wanna take 180 again, subtract the one angle I know because now I'm done with this triangle really. Now I'm just focused on this one. So subtract the one angle I know and now take the remainder and divide it by 2 because I know it's got to be split evenly. So 31. So that tells me this angle is 31 degrees and this angle is 31 degrees. So I was able to figure out all the angles based off of just one corner angle knowing it's comprised of isosceles triangles. On this page we're going to be talking about equilateral triangles. The thing about equilateral triangles is that all sides are equal and all angles are equal. Now let's make sure we understand the difference when we say all sides are equal, notice how I have a tick mark on every single side. That means that whatever this side is, it's equal to this side and it's equal to this side, okay? Separately, all angles are equal. And for 180 degrees to be split equally three ways, it's going to be 60 degrees every single time. So if they tell you it's an equilateral triangle, you know what the angles are. There are 60 degrees each, okay? So just please understand that we're not saying that because these are all 60 degrees, so are the outside. No, 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 no. We don't know what the outside are. It could, could be anything, right? But we know the insides are 60 degrees. All right, so let's do some examples. The first one says find all sides and angles, okay? So if I know this is an equilateral triangle as it shows me with the three tick marks, right? And this side it's telling me is 26. So I can automatically say this side's 26 and this side's 26. Now, what do I know about the angles? Because it asked me to, to find those as well. Well, if this is an equilateral triangle, this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. All right, now this la next example, triangle ABC is equilateral, missing my little Q there, oops, and line BD, right here, BD bisects angle ABC. So this is a bisector. Okay, so one thing you have to understand about the term bisector, and I'm pretty sure it's the, it's the first time that we've used this in Miss Miss Math tutorials. When you have a bisector, that means that it splits that angle perfectly evenly. Okay, so I know that whatever angle one and angle two are, if this BD is a true bisector, they are going to be equal to each other. Okay, so what do I know the total of angle B has to be. They've told me this is an equilateral triangle. 
So I know all the angles have to be 60 degrees. So I would just say, okay, well, if I know angle B is 60 degrees, what is angle B split in two? Which we know is 30. So therefore I know angle one has to be 30 degrees and angle two has to be 30 degrees. All right, now I want you guys to try this one on your own. So if the vertex angle, remember we said that's like the top angle. If the vertex angle is 44 degrees, what are the two base angles? So I will post the answer in the description of this video. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.